Hi, we're the Flying Finnies. We have just spent a fantastic few days in Dubai, and it raises the question whether or not you should seek to do a bit of a layover in Dubai. We'll answer that question at the end of the video, but what we want to do is take you through what we did, what it cost us, and how much we loved it. For those of you who follow our channel, we've recently been in Japan, and we've been enjoying a fantastic few weeks looking at all of the winter festivals, particularly in the northern part of Japan. What's probably very confusing to you though is that we're clearly not in Japan or the United Arab Emirates at the moment. And in fact, we're in North Africa, but there'll be more on that in future episodes. What we're really trying to do here though is to help you determine whether you should have a stopover in Dubai if it's an option for you. Now I will say that Dubai was most probably one of the most expensive places that we went to during our travels. You can burn a lot of money here really, really quickly. We did as usual though, try to do it on a budget and we managed reasonably well, but again, we'll cover off all that at the end of the video. So how did we actually get to Dubai? Well, we were looking for flights to get from Japan to Portugal and we found some really great Emirates flights um, using our Qantas frequent flyer points. So we decided to book those and that of course gave us the opportunity to have a stopover in Dubai for a few days. Now Emirates were fantastic. We have flown with Emirates a number of times and one of the best things about Emirates is the service that you get. This is not a sponsored video by any means but we really appreciate the extra attention that we do get from Emirates. I wish it was sponsored if anybody from Emirates is watching. <laughs> but no need for it to be sponsored. We do really like Emirates. We've had really great experience on those planes. So the great thing about Emirates this time was that we actually got a little bit of a benefit in terms of our seating. We're towards the end of one of the best flights we've ever had. We had just booked economy seats as we always do. And Emirates very kindly recognised that Graham is a gold frequent flyer with Qantas and that gets you status with Emirates as well. And then they kindly found us some other seats, not upgraded to business, but found us um, two basically empty rows. So we each got two seats to ourselves towards the back of the plane. And being able to access the lounges in Japan on the way there was also fantastic. And the lounges in Dubai as well. <laughs> so one of the great things about Dubai is the transport systems through the city. And there are buses available, but we mainly concentrated on the metro and also monorails. The metro was great, really efficient. The trains came constantly. You never had to wait, but they were always crowded at all times of the day and night. They were super crowded. So you really did have to squish in. Um, but they do have separate compartments or carriages for females only so that does make it a bit more comfortable rather than having to squash in or for me rather than having to squash into a compartment full of men you can go in a compartment with females. Now it's actually quite surprising how large Dubai is. It's a really large place and the distances between stations is quite um, large so you may only have to go three or four stops but the distance between each stop is significant so it often takes longer than you think it's going to. But the cost is actually pretty good. As always using public transport is just a smart thing to do right? Now the flying finnies do travel on a budget and that particularly relates to our accommodation. I'm the one responsible for booking accommodation so I do look for places that are lower cost and that's a bit of a challenge in Dubai. Things are not cheap there um, and the accommodation we booked was it was great it was great value it was really quirky. So most of the accommodation that isn't, um, you know, four or five star hotels is these apartment style hotels. So the accommodation was a massive apartment that was probably 20 times bigger than we would normally have. So there was plenty of room. It was just quite uh, unusual and a little odd for us. One of the areas that was highly recommended was Dubai Creek and the associated gold souk that was just across from the creek. Yeah, it was a really enjoyable visit. It's kind of the, um, the old historic area of Dubai and it's really interesting to see that juxtaposition between that new high rise, shiny, glitzy Dubai that we're all probably fairly familiar with from photos and videos with this old traditional um, you know, North African style souk, Middle Eastern style souk. It was fantastic. 
Now, getting across the creek was interesting. Um, we didn't realise there are a whole lot of different ferries going to different locations. They've all got numbers on them. The price is extremely inexpensive. And just the experience of jumping onto one of these ferries and going across the creek was magical. <laughs> Now the gold souk itself just stretches on and on. I'm not sure it's necessarily our thing, but there were a lot of people shopping in there. Yeah, we weren't there to buy anything, but it was lovely to look at all the um, really extravagant pieces of gold jewellery that you could buy there. So definitely worth the experience if you have time in Dubai. So another area that I think is worthwhile seeing is the palms. I think it's a must do if you're there. It's such a unique feature of Dubai. Um, that whole area that is reclaimed land and it was built literally in the shape of a palm frond. So really interesting to see that. Now we took the metro from the Dubai Mall area out past the Emirates Mall. In hindsight, I think we would have liked to have stopped off at the Emirates Mall because there is a massive ski ramp internal to the mall. I too am sorry that we didn't do that, but it was really fabulous to see the um, palms area. Interesting quirky place again. From street level or from the monorail, which is how you get around the palm, you can't really see that it's shaped like a palm. You really need to get a bird's eye view to see that shape. There was some really fantastic architecture out there and we really enjoyed a walk along the um, promenade which stretches for miles and miles and miles. On our way back from Atlantis, we were keen to have a little bit of a swim. Um, and so we stopped off at West Beach. Unfortunately, as we found out, it's fairly commercialized there. And whilst we found out later, there are other places in the palms you can go to swim. Yeah, it was a no deal for us that day in terms of swimming. We couldn't find a place um, where the general public were actually able to swim. It was all kind of private beach area. And that's a really strange concept for an Australian. All our beaches are public. There's no such thing as a private beach or even a, a private part of a beach. So, um, yeah, so we weren't expecting that, I guess. <laughs> The place that we spent most of our time and that I probably enjoyed the most was the Dubai Mall. Now I'm not normally a shopper and in fact I'm not really a shopper so it wasn't the fact that it was a mall that I loved, it was just the facilities and the surroundings of that mall that were quite incredible. Yeah, the inside of the mall is massive, it hosts a huge aquarium um, where you can go diving in the aquarium itself. And there is also an ice rink as well. So Dubai really has a lot of options for entertainment if you're seeking to do that. But the key thing about Dubai Mall is the massive water feature and fountains and ponds that are in between that and the Burj Khalifa. One of the things that I loved about it was that you didn't need to buy a ticket to the aquarium to actually see quite a bit of it. You could buy a ticket to go inside. We chose not to do that because there's a massive um, wall of glass that sees right into the aquarium. And we saw sharks and stingrays and types of fish that we'd never seen before just while we're standing in the mall. So the budget side of me really loved that. And I really, you know, I love my animals. So I loved watching all the fish and stingrays swim around as well. Now, another part to the budget piece is, of course, the show that occurs out on the ponds regularly throughout the day and into the evening. Yeah, we enjoyed it twice. We watched it um, during the day and it's fabulous. You know, it's just, I don't know, it goes for probably five minutes of this beautiful fountain show um, and they choreograph it to music. And then we watched it again at night, actually from two different perspectives. We watched it um, from the ground level at night and we also watched it from the top of the Burj Khalifa where we were looking down on it. So that was really special. 
انت من تنسان اكثر قلبي مو من قلبك اصغر ومثل ما تشعر تاكد اني اشعر فيني من One of the paid activities that we chose to view was to visit the Sky View Tower. Now we chose to do this because it actually gave you a really fantastic view of the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world. And it also had this appealing um, glass slide that actually sits on the outside of the building that you get to slide down. So that was really appealing to me. Now a little bit of travel hacking, because we travel with Emirates, we were able to get a little bit of a discount both for sky views and also subsequently for the Burj Khalifa. It did mean that we had to go and pick up some tickets earlier in the day, but it did provide, given that it is an expensive ticket, <laughs> it was quite worthwhile doing that. We have differing opinions on whether it was worthwhile to do that. It did save us some money, but it did take us a long time to get to the building, find the ticket booth, buy the tickets. We probably spent two to three hours actually doing that, where we could have been doing something else that day. It often depends on um, your priorities, how much spare time you've got. For most people, that probably wasn't worthwhile. We were prepared to do that, although we weren't aware at the time that it was going to take us quite that long. <laughs> to save 20% on our ticket price, we spent an hour wandering around looking for it. So you decide whether that's worth it for you. It is for us. Now, we timed our visit at Sky Views with the sun going down. Um, it provided a great view of the Burj Khalifa and the area around Dubai Mall, both during the day and at night. And we were also able to enjoy a slide. <laughs> we're also able to enjoy a slide that, how would you describe it? We had to wait in line, and I'm not exaggerating, for two hours to get onto this slide. But when you actually get on it, you don't slide. It's like you go, t -t 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 -t. you just putter down this very short glass <laughs> slide. So um, was that worth it? Probably not. But it felt like it was a must do. And by the time we'd been in the line for an hour, it was like, well, there's no point stopping now. We may as well stay <laughs> and do it. So one of the attractions for sky views is that you're actually walking over glass panels that you can see down to the streetscape below. So quite a few people will sit down and have their photograph taken looking down through the glass panels and then down onto the road. The, the glass um, floor was really interesting to me and that was, that was probably worth it. And also getting those great views of the Burj. The slide though, um, despite that seeming like the main attraction, was probably, after having experienced it, the least appealing part of that afternoon activity. <laughs> That's, uh, that was slow. <laughs> so having finished up at Sky Views, we then decided to go to the Burj Khalifa. Now again, we had bought our tickets earlier on in the day at discount and then went up to the top. The lift ride on the way up, again, was magical. There are a couple of different options for you to go and visit the Burj Khalifa. There is a fantastic bar and lounge, so we're advised, right at the very top. We didn't do that. It was a little bit too expensive. A little bit too expensive. It was way too expensive, way beyond our budget. Um, there's two other levels you can go to. It's a bit like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. There's a, let's call it the lowest level that you can go to. And then there's another level in between that and the very top, which is where we chose to go. It was a fantastic view. The thing that I remember most about it though was that the Burj Khalifa was actually above the clouds. And so we had this experience of cloud mist swirling around us and looking down through the clouds, particularly when the light show was on down in the Dubai Mall. It's not an inexpensive activity to go to any level of the Burj Khalifa. If you're on a really tight budget, you probably wouldn't choose to actually go up 
into the Burj. Um, it's beautiful to look at from the ground, um, but we just felt that we needed to say that we had been in the world's tallest building and almost to the top. I particularly loved watching the clouds swirl around us. That was pretty magical. That has never, well, I've never experienced that before. So I really did love that. World's shortest girl in the world's tallest tower. Our favorite activity though was actually outside of Dubai. We jumped on a bus and went to Abu Dhabi to visit the Grand Mosque and it was amazing. We had no expectations of this and in fact it was um, a friend who lived in Dubai that recommended that we go to Abu Dhabi to see it. Um, and we were just literally blown away by the beauty, the size, the scale, the majesty of this place. I would compare it to our experience at the Taj Mahal. It's obviously not as large or as grand as the Taj, but it had a similar feeling to me. I think one of the best things that you can do though is to book in for a free tour, which takes you a little bit behind the scenes and into a couple of areas of the Grand Mosque that ordinarily you're unable to get to. It really showcased the beauty of the Grand Mosque, the beautiful glass chandeliers, the inlaid pillars uh, and the walkways that were phenomenal. This is something that I now recommend to anybody who is passing through this part of the world. It's an absolute must see if you can get there. Now you do have to be mindful of wearing appropriate clothing. We're at the Grand Mosque in Abu Dhabi and I thought I had come prepared in terms of dress code for the mosque but I did miss one thing which I wasn't aware of prior to coming here. So I have on a conservative shirt, I've got my headscarf, I've got full length trousers, but you actually need a full sleeve. As a female, to get into the mosque, you need a full sleeve. So um, fortunately, one of the local shops here sells like a, a fake sleeve, look. So it's like a long glove without hands in it, um, which was a bit cheaper than buying a whole new shirt. So if you're coming here, bring a sweater or wear a long sleeve shirt is my suggestion. So transportation to and from Abu Dhabi is super easy. We just boarded a coach, uh, got there very, very quickly, had a look at the mosque. We didn't have a great deal of time left over for the rest of the day though. No, because we slept too late and got on the bus too late, basically. <laughs> There's a palace there as well, which you can see if you go. We didn't see that. Um, I guess we do that next time. But definitely worth visiting and for me, number one attraction in going to the UAE. So to answer the question, should you have a stop over in Dubai? My answer is yes, you should. We had a really fantastic few days there. Um, it can be expensive, but it doesn't have to be expensive. So you can do lots of activities at no cost. So seeing the outside of the Burj, going into the Dubai Mall, going into the Emirates Mall, visiting the Palm du Maria, um, you know, watching the um, fountain show, all those things cost nothing. Um, so you can actually get away with spending a really great few days and not spend a lot of money if you choose to do so. If you time your visit also with promotions that are being run by the major airlines that service that part of the region, you can also do really well. As we mentioned, we were able to take advantage of some coupons through Emirates, but I'm led to believe that um, other airlines also offer some nights of free accommodation depending on how you book your travel. So travel hacking again, a lot of opportunities there to try to lower the cost of your stopover in Dubai. I would do it again. I'd do it again. Especially as Australians, because often flights from Australia, if you're going to Europe um, or anywhere in the, the Middle East, you go through Dubai. So um, it's kind of a natural stopover point for us. Thanks for watching. We hope you really enjoyed the video and learned something about Dubai and the United Arab Emirates. And stay tuned for our next video on Portugal. We had a great time there. Looking forward to making the video for you from there. But for now, it is time to fly.
Time to fly. Bye. What country number is this? Hang on. Oh, hold on. Oh.